to Node Spaghetti Live. I'm doing Sculpt January 2022 because I really want to start being more uh, productive and focusing more on my art stuff and I want to get back into making videos and more than anything I just want to have the discipline to tell myself to do something and stick to it and do it because that's surprisingly hard to do. Uh, Especially for me, because I tend to get interested in something for about a week and then move on to something else. So if I make it to day, like, 15, then maybe maybe I've proven something here. <laughs> Anyhow, um, today's prompt is Genie Bottle, which doesn't leave much room for creative interpretation. After all, it doesn't even really give me the option of making it a genie lamp or one of those rings. I mean, genies can be in other things besides bottles, right? Uh, so I, uh, we'll get into some reference images here. Genie bottles, right? And uh, it makes me think of, <laughs> makes me think of uh, hookah pipes. Basically the same thing. So. I'm also going to look at those for reference. And uh, in any case, I think this will be easy. It'll be kind of fun. Um, won't take me too long. And that's good because the last couple of nights I've made the mistake of trying to do something that was a little bit too much for a one or two hour time slot. And uh, it's driving me sick. And, you know, I want to spend time on other stuff. I uh, spent some time during my lunch break at work today writing down ideas for new tutorials and, and uh, planning um, some of the things I'm going to be doing, you know, and uh, I'm cut out of this. Uh, um, I'm starting to get excited about it, you know. I, I think especially uh, tomorrow, I think, I'm going to do some live Python stuff because not a lot of people are doing that as far as I know. Uh, and really it's probably just going to be practice for maybe a video I'm going to record or something. Or maybe it's just going to be me making a simple add-on. Not really sure. Haven't done it yet. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm especially looking forward to it because the... Uh, fancy expensive mechanical keyboard that I ordered on Black Friday months ago finally came in. Supply chain problems, right? But uh, I'm, literally looking, I'm looking forward to typing on this thing. The keys feel nice. I got the brown switches. Um, anyhow, without further ado, let's get started. Um... I don't want to get rid of all of these vertices. I think what I'm going to do, genie bottle, right? I'm going to use this as an opportunity to show you one of Blender's more little known and fun modifiers called the spin modifier. Is it called the spin modifier? See, even I don't know it. Where is it? Where are you? Screw modifier. <laughs> Uh, and you can you can see what it does already here. It takes what you have, and it spins it around and around and around. And if I were to do that, then it creates a uh, like a shape. But you got to be careful because it'll create internal faces, which you can see there on the inside. So you really you really only want to do it with a wire of vertices like this. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do it with uh, with uh, um, with faces. I, I mean frankly I haven't seen very many people do it at all. So you know and uh, again, I don't really feel like this leaves much room for creative interpretation. And I'm also not feeling particularly 
interested in, in being super creative today. I just want this to be over with. Um, I've done several of these now, you know, and I'm starting to wonder if I really have what it takes to to stream it. I mean, I don't mind doing it. That's not the hard part, but I feel like if I've got a camera in front of my face and people might tune in and watch me or whatever, then uh, <laughs> I feel like I should try to st try to stay interesting, right? Uh, and it's hard to do that, especially while I'm working, because uh, the part of your brain that does all this creative visual stuff, at least if Betty Edwards' book is to be believed, is a is a different part of the brain than the part that uh, that you talk with. Uh, hold on, I've got a copy of the book on, on my shelf over here. Uh, I'll get it because I think it's interesting. Where is that book? On my art stuff shelf. I know I have it. I'm just kidding, the ladies book. Did I let somebody borrow it and then never get it back? Where is it? Oh, that's embarrassing. I thought for sure I had it over there. Well, the book I was referring to was uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, which I, I know I have a copy of. I, have, I think I even have a copy of her other book. But I can't find it, so instead I got Kim and Nicolaides, The Natural Way to Draw, which is also an excellent book. Um, and well worth finding on... Uh, perfectly legal book sharing websites <laughs> if you're interested in learning how to draw. It's also work, worth buying, but you know, the guy's been dead for like 50 years. So it's not like you're really doing him any good by buying this book. <laughs> um, also, I want to say for the record that any of the things that I make while I am living, uh, I give all of you full right and title and permission to pirate extensive to pirate extensively as soon as I die, because they won't do me any good when I'm dead. Well, you know, or at most ten years afterwards. Uh, that's that's not related. I just I just um, that's my opinion. Now, I can't bevel an individual vertex. What we can do is extrude it, then bevel it. <laughs> and now we can just get rid of these other guys. And the spin modifier still works like a charm. But I still want to, um, I still want to bevel these two. <laughs> and just get in the way. You know what? Why don't I just keep those other verts there? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna want to keep beveling stuff. Nothing like a good bevel after all. Um Uh, oh, I didn't give you my shortcut key viewer. Sorry about that. There it is. That uh, color doesn't quite work today, does it? Let's make it orange. Now we can see it. All right. This is the uh, edge loop offset tool, which I swear by. It's, it's wonderful. And uh, press E to make it even. Shrink up with the S, uh, Alt S key, and bevel again. It's a few too many verts. 
And honestly, all of this stuff can be solved by beveling, right? Yes, I know I'm supposed to be sculpting, but this is... Actually, probably this is ruining the fun of sculpting this, isn't it? Then again... Why would you ever sculpt something like this? Well, I know I said I wanted this to be easy, but I'm about to make it a lot harder for myself. <laughs> By choosing to do this the wrong... Like, the wrong way. early on. Uh, uh, to X. There we go. So instead of being instead of being cheap and, and just modeling it and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna try to sculpt it. Who knows? Maybe it'll be more interesting if I do that. Go. That's good enough. Um, well, I'll give myself another another vert here. Man, this new keyboard is a pleasure to use. I don't like to spend money willy nilly on consumer goods, <laughs> um, but I have upgraded my computer a little bit recently because I. I am a professional artist, and I, I do try to use my computer for productive money-making ventures. Uh, I rarely actually finish projects that I can make money on, but I, you know, I am at least I'm at least trying, right? But uh, the keyboard and the mouse are the things that I touch, that I that I physically interact with to do my job. So I feel like it's really important to to enjoy that experience if, if you're going to be using the computer a lot. And uh, one of the features about this keyboard that I'm excited about is that it has a detachable USB-C connector in the back here. Maybe you can see it. So I can yank this out and uh, take the keyboard with me and uh, I can just plug it back in without having to bend down in the bottom of my desk. You know, which is horrible, especially when you're as overweight as me. Uh, I work on a computer for a living, so I, I need to be really self-conscious about exercising. Um, but anyways, it's, it's a great feature. So what I can do is I can just get a USB A to C cable at work and bring my own keyboard. And I think I'm going to start doing that. Probably make me more productive, too. Uh... Let's subdivide this so that we have some geometry to work with. Then I think I'm going to use a multi-res modifier. Why not? Um, you know what, I just had a pretty, uh, <laughs> I just had a pretty evil thought. And I just found a way to make this a creative challenge. Uh, <laughs> it's Sculpt January, which means I have to use Sculpt tools, right? So... If you'll permit me one line, gotta have something to work with, right? Divide a bunch. Grease pencil has a sculpt mode. <laughs> so, um,. I'm going to sculpt this into the shape 
that my uh, that my uh, bottle is supposed to have for this spin modifier. I wonder if it even has the screw modifier. It doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, and if this was a curve, I could even um, use the screw modifier with it while I'm doing this. <laughs> now I feel clever. It's fun to be clever. Alright. And it'll end up a lot more interesting in shape than the than the one that I ripped off the internet anyways, so. Besides I think that it looks like that's the the, the prop for my dream of genie. Which if you're uh I mean I'm I'm too young to know what that is. Um but my mom used to watch it when I was a kid, uh, and I think it actually, let me just look this up real quick. There's an old sitcom from like the 40s or 50s. Oh, from the 60s. Only ran for five years. Uh, and it took place, yeah, her husband's an astronaut, so it takes place on, I think on the space coast of Florida. Uh... Where does it take place? I don't I don't care about any of that crap. Where is the setting? Yeah, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Which, uh, I don't want to tell you too much about myself, but, um, yes, my mom, my mom liked that show, and, uh, she watched it when she lived in another state. <laughs> So she thought it was kind of surreal when she ended up living on the space coast of Florida. That's where I grew up. Um, good place, too. Mostly sensible. There's a lot of crazy people in Florida. You know, the whole Florida man thing. But when you've grown up with it, you, you kind of... It becomes a little bit endearing after a while, you know? Like... Anyways, this counts as sculpting. This is still sculpting. This is still Sculpt January. I have found a loophole, and I am going to exploit the heck out of it. Uh, especially since I don't foresee very many more opportunities to do so. Um, uh, maybe I need to simplify that bit. Simplifying and remeshing and stuff is allowed. Uh, hold on. It's too far away. <laughs> mm, too much. You know the shift key while you drag these sliders? And they'll go more slowly. I actually didn't want adaptive. I want uh, simplify fixed, please. Do it again. Yeah, so in all. Oh, hi, Uber Eats. How you doing? Good to see you again. I found a loophole around, around Sculpt January. I started today's session with uh, this spin modifier and a reference image. I'm sorry, the screw modifier is what it's called. And then I realized that I was just going to model the bottle without actually model the bottle without actually doing any sculpting, and that and that's 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 kind of that's kind of no fun, right? Then I realized I could do the same thing by sculpting a grease pencil drawing into the shape of the screw modifier. And if you don't know what the screw modifier is. Let me just show you real quick. Um, I don't see it being used very often, so I'll just you'll be able to see what it does really, really quickly. Um, so the screw modifier takes your geometry and spins it. That's why I said it was this spin modifier. Let's see, useful for creating screws and bottles and things like that. So I. 
ain't gonna deal with this today. I got too many things on my mind. Uh, <laughs> so I found a loophole, which I'm kind of proud of myself for. I bet you nobody else thought of doing this. <laughs> um. There we go, that's good enough. I'll subdivide it more in a minute. I am kind of using that uh, an image on the internet as a yeah, it's just like CAD, and I'm kind of using a reference image here, but I'm going to deviate from it once I get it into generally the right shape, because it's no fun to just copy other people's work. Uh, it's supposed to be like a little divot. Actually, this might be harder than sculpting it in 3D, <laughs> but I'm going to commit to it. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do in Blender that, that is similar in a way to CAD. It's never going to get you the kind of, uh, well, it's never going to get you the kind of ridiculous poly count that CAD does, I'll tell you that much. Um, or, or like the mathematical rigor, although you can be really precise in Blender if you model carefully. But um, especially with, uh, with geometry nodes becoming more and more mature, uh, which I, I think is really exciting. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities to do really cool stuff entirely with modifiers. Um, and in fact, uh, if only I had sculpt tools for curves, I could be doing this with a curve and I could use geometry nodes to convert the curve to a mesh object and then uh, <laughs> and then I could use the uh, mesh object with the screw modifier <laughs> and just have it in real time. I would probably make this a lot easier too. Um, but rules are rules. I got a sculpt. If I was allowed to model everything, it would be called Model January. And that does not roll off the tongue very well at all. Um, uh, what the heck? Oh, there we go. I wish Blender had CAD. All the CAD, CAD software I've used is just terrible. Yeah. Free CAD and Interfusion, all not the best. I think there's one called LibraCAD. I've got a brother who's an engineer who uses AutoCAD. Had a roommate who was an engineer, uh, engineering student who is now an engineer, and he used, uh, he used AutoCAD also. I don't think I could get used to it. I actually knew a guy at church who was like a plumbing engineer or something, and he used some sort of CAD software. I think he designed sprinkler systems. One of those like super like unique jobs that not very many people do. Not very many people know how to do it. He's like, yeah, pretty cool guy. I I should I should try to I should try to start going to church again. I've been missing every Sunday for months. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? I'm pretty sure Blender. Uh, let me check. I'm pretty sure Blender makes use of uh, Inkscape in its. Uh, where is my Blender? Blender Git. Blender source. And I think it would be in. Uh, where is it? Intern, extern. I think that Blender makes use of Inkscape. Maybe it's an intern. I'm not going to spend a long time looking for it, but uh, I don't see it. I'm I'm ninety percent sure Blender uh, uses Inkscape as a library when you build it. <laughs> it's an X three D modeling software. Uh, it's because I, I think it's because of the 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 line tracing for uh, for grease pencil, but maybe it's for uh, maybe it's for importing and exporting SVG. I don't know. Uh, 
but I'm I'm 95% sure that I, I had to install Inkscape to compile Blender. But that was a long time ago now that I had to do that, so I don't remember. I haven't been building Blender very often lately because I've been doing all my work on the, uh, you know, for work on more stable releases because who wants a version breaking compatibility error or a, a huge bug? Oh, is FontForge using Scape too? That's, that's funny because I actually discovered FontForge this week, incidentally, and I was thinking about using in Inkscape to trace a bunch of images and import them in there. And I ended up just using Blender's object font feature, which broke in version 3.0. Uh, I actually helped report a bug on that today, too. How fun. Um, this is all misshapen. Uh, let's see. I guess I can subdivide it a whole bunch now. It's kind of in the right shape. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that it's all misshapen, <laughs> as I just said. Um, push. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I, you said, but you wrote a Python script that uses Inkscape. Was that uh, as like a sub module, or does Inkscape use Python inside, or is it sub processing? I think it's called sub process when you call a program from Python as if it were in a shell script. It does look like a chess piece. It's like a uh, it's like a queen or something. When I when I first saw it, I thought it looked like a like a hookah pipe. You know, <laughs> don't they look similar? It's that Persian design flair. Oh, it uses FontForge. I would like to play around with FontForge. It's got a really unique uh, '90s esque user interface that is rather charming. It looks like a Windows 95 program, you know? Oh, okay, yeah. Speaking of uh, Python, um, thinking about doing some live Blender add-on production videos. Shape of these things is completely, completely wrong. Um, I recently, I've been working on, on an add-on that I might not show publicly just yet. Uh, yeah, fonts aren't that, they aren't that complex, are they? The, I only played with it for a few minutes, but the one thing that annoyed me about FontForge was that it, the auto trace didn't seem to have an option bar. Even though, uh, even though Potrace, that the, the library it uses to do that, same one that Inkscape uses, and Inkscape absolutely does give you options. Okay, it's impossible to get this smooth now. <laughs> times smooth it font rendering is, is difficult oh I had no idea I mean I know that like uh, dealing with all the kerning and stuff is it's difficult I had to take some graphic design classes when I was going through university and I'm I'm usually pretty careful to know what I'm doing and understand the art stuff. But when it came to the all the like learning about like 
kerning and letting and and uh, line widths and m's and things like that I'm just like no way not doing that it didn't matter because my professor was such a absolute charlatan that <laughs> that I ended up knowing more than him even even by not paying attention or <laughs> or or anything like that like this, this guy literally uh, taught a Photoshop and Illustrator uh, class and a Maya class I took both I took two classes with this guy um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I didn't do a single assignment in Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, or Maya. I did all of it in, uh, I did all the Maya assignments in Blender. <laughs> and I did all the Photoshop and, and Illustrator assignments in GIMP and Inkscape, respectively. <laughs> uh, feels good, man. I was paying like $200 a credit hour. I wasn't about to spend a whole bunch of money on software too. You know? Um, can I checker deselect? Where's my checker deselect? No! It, it's super complicated in Arabic. I, I bet that's true. Isn't Arabic like all cursive? I'm afraid I'm not very familiar with Arabic. <laughs> I'm sure the sure the like Dean or whatever wouldn't have found it funny but nobody ever found out because the guy the guy made all of the submissions JPEGs and so I was able to save several hundred dollars by just not just not paying for the software I was paying to learn whatever I didn't want to learn that stuff anyways I just wanted the degree now I'm not sure if that was the right choice. I think it, I think ultimately it was. But my gosh, going to university is a pain. I just I wish it weren't so necessary in in the modern world. This is the part to chime in with one of those American problems. Ha ha ha! I'm in Germany and I get free college or. Or whatever. <laughs> um, I'm actually much happier in Florida, though. Got a lot of freedom here. And that... I think it's worth... Uh, I think it's worth paying a little bit more for... For things. Let's subdivide this, shall we? That, and I actually, like, I... I kind of grew up, you know, uh, as Americans do, thinking, oh, it's a big country. <laughs> well, I hope you're in a sensible part of America. Get out of California if that's where you are. I got a buddy living in California. Poor guy. I bet he has to wear three masks to go to to go to work. <laughs> um. Oh crap! What was I talking? Oh yeah, I was saying. Uh, you know, I grew up in America as Americans do, and thinking it's just a big country and all of it's the same country, and I could go anywhere, do any job. You know, I felt free to move around. And that's one of the good things about America, is that it, there's a lot of places you can go and you're still in the same country with the same culture, more or less, and it's not too hard to move from place to place. But then I, ooh, the buffering's bad. I honestly have no idea how to fix that. Um, go to place to place and you feel pretty much at home anywhere, but I realize that I, I don't feel that way about about it anymore recently a few months ago my family was invited to the like 115th anniversary of some church in the west part of Florida 
again, I don't want to give up too much information about myself. But we went out into the old uh, church cemetery, and there was like three or four generations of my family buried there. Right there in Florida. And I don't really know where they came from before that. I'd like this to be thinner up here. Um, well, that's kind of an extra. Oh, yeah, I was about to make a joke about that. I've heard the uh, internet speeds up there are very low. But maybe it's... Maybe it's good, because there's tons and tons and tons of empty land for miles and miles and miles, rural areas, right? And if things had gone differently, you'd be speaking Russian right now. <laughs> I don't know who's better off. Um, but anyhow, seeing three or four generations of my family buried in the ground outside of some million-year-old church, hearing that it was my something or something or other that, you know, that, that owned the land or built the church or something like that, it, it's, uh, it makes me rethink the idea of leaving. And it kind of sucks, because there really aren't a lot of 3D artist jobs here in Florida. So... You know, if for some reason things don't work out where I am now, or or like if I try to get freelance jobs, then it either has to be remote or I'm gonna have to leave. Um, part of the reason why I'm very motivated to succeed in my current job is because I really don't want to go somewhere else other than Florida. Although I could stand to leave Orlando. city was built after I mean it, it existed but it was pretty much built after after Disney World was built <laughs> so there was no planning whatsoever put into the city's design and its traffic is just abysmal and appalling everywhere 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 as a result Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Um, not quite. Uh, not quite. Um, so I'd like to stay in Florida for the time being. Why did my song stop? Yes, keep playing music, you stupid dingus. I hate how YouTube has that thing where it'll stop playing music after so long. Yeah, thanks for joining me, Uber. Great to have you. Hate how it asks you, oh, are you still listening? Stops the music. Makes you click. And I'm kind of, like, weird in the brain, so I feel like if a song gets interrupted or or stopped, or if somebody talks over it or something, then I have to start it over from the beginning, even if it's like three quarters of the way through. So that'll happen to me. And I'll have to listen to the whole song over again, which is usually, you know, fine, because I, I like the music I listen to. But it also causes me to repeat songs a lot. <laughs> I could always just not do it, but... I also probably just, I can't do that. Um, let's see. Yes, I think I'm happy with this. Let's convert it to... Uh, convert it to mesh. There it is. <laughs> convert it to... Messy. Oh, I want to simplify it first. 
simplify sampled simplify adaptive when I was a little bit more unemployed I used to uh, read the weekly patch and uh, like code blog stuff for blender I was obsessive of it to the point of like reading commit logs, which is a little bit embarrassing to admit, but um, anyhow, that that simplify adaptive feature that I was just using, I read the uh, the development logs of that about that, and it's it's achieved using a library that Clement Foucault wrote. I'm sure I'm probably not saying that right. Uh, I think specifically for that, that just converts an arbitrary number of points to a close-fitting Bezier curve. Uh, and anyways, I'm happy that I that I was like spurgaciously reading all the uh, the patch notes because. I'm using that library in my add-on now. <laughs> I just haven't released that version of it publicly because uh, I don't know how to make that portable. But it's a really nice little tool if you ever need to make a Bezier curve, which is something that I had to do surprisingly often. Uh, anyways, convert this to path. And now let's... Con And now let's convert to, uh, hey, that's not a path. What the heck? Do it. Oh, okay. Um, convert you to a mesh. And be a little screw modifier the mesh. Oh my gosh. And voila, we have ourselves a genie bottle. Um, go ahead and apply visual geometry to mesh here. I'm gonna try to fix these weird. Oh gosh, oh my. There actually is a symmetry feature for There's a symmetry feature for uh, radial. So, how exactly does that work? Ah, right, right. But I think I want radial around Z. Yes, so. I don't know if I've ever used this before, but. <sighs> Wireframe, please. Today's, uh, by the way, Node Spaghetti's recommendation today. Node Spaghetti recommends. Um, this is the whole playlist, but I'm just gonna post it. Is, uh, oh gosh, oh my. Copy URL. Node Spaghetti recommends today. Steam Breather by Mastodon. Pretty great song. Uh, Mastodon. Super old band now. Uh, they're kind of a heavyish. They used to be like super ridiculously heavy, and these days they're just kind of heavy. Good stuff. Wow, that's not what that's supposed to do. <laughs> this is supposed to keep its shape. Works okay there. <laughs> it causes all kinds of weird problems there. Huh. Use a scrape brush then. 
I like this because it's kind of like a digital lathe. Actually, I think I've been using the wrong number of brushes here. Uh, let's go back a bit. So how many... I think it's got 16 going around, right? There we go. So I... I think I can just... Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, let's inflate this then. If I can just do like this. <laughs> uh, I feel so clever. I've managed to turn a sculpting challenge into... Uh, into essentially a modeling task. Where is smooth? There it is. Too much strength. Um, I don't really plan on continuing to stream after Sculpt January is over. Unless I do another one of those, uh, um, art a day challenge thingies, which I, I don't really like it because it, I feel like it puts too much pressure on me, you know, uh, I get stressed and anxious very easily, uh, it's kind of a flaw of mine, I guess. Although I, I think that, I think it's just a fact. I don't think it's something that I have any control over. Uh, I mean, of course I've got some control over it, but I mean like the amount of stress and anxiety a person experiences is just kind of, I think that's environmental and it's how you deal with it that really matters. Um, sometimes I don't deal with it very well. Uh, these sorts of things are good because they can force me to deal with it well, but they're bad because then I've got a lot of a lot of stress to deal with. I don't particularly like deadlines, but if I don't have a deadline, then I never get finished, and. Uh, this gives me something like a daily deadline. Which is a little bit too much to handle sometimes. But honestly, the hard part is not making mistakes with my camera and microphone. And, uh,. Having something interesting to say while I'm working, you know. I don't like to have a lot of dead air. You know, you... I guess it's up to you to decide if, if what I'm saying is interesting or not, but personally, I think it's a lot better than silence. And it's kind of cathartic, you know? I feel like nobody has anyone to talk to these days because we're all like shut up inside of our homes. Or at least recently that was a lot more common. And, uh, well, with all the coronavirus stuff, um, Never really hit Florida all that bad, but uh, there was still a period of time where we were 
locked in our homes and stuff. So it it's kind of cathartic to, even if it's not, not like a, you know, I'm talking to a camera, right? But uh, it's kind of nice. Um, this is the part where somebody makes a joke about how the only friends I have are the friends I make up or imagine or something like that. And that's not true. The fact is I've alienated all of my IRL friends because I, I'm too merciless in my usage of internet memes to mock them for their problems. Causes my friends to hate me. <laughs> um. smooth this up a little bit still has that kind of weird looking uh... ugly normals sorry excuse me uh... so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back into sculpt mode oh oh even better I'm just gonna grab these guys. Place where these are bigger. There we go. Is it like that? Huh? I'm going to use loop tools. Space them out. Oh, hey, FX Experiments. Nice to see you. The uh, fancy new keyboard is a Ducky 1 2. It's a confusing name because the model of the keyboard is Z O N E 1, and it's the second. Arabic numeral two. It's the second uh, iteration of the design. Wow, I've never seen loop tools take this long before. Probably because I'm telling it to work on 14,000 verts. Um, this is the first mechanical keyboard I've owned. Uh, and I spent a few weeks looking into it and I think I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it's heavy. I'm not sure whether that's a good or a bad thing yet. And uh, I don't like how it has Windows keys. I'm probably going to replace them with something with a, a penguin or a, or a GNU on it. And it's got a, a CAL button. I have no idea what it does. I guess it's supposed to open a calendar. <laughs> um, what the heck is up with these normals? No, it's just weird looking. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I should admit to the whole internet that that uh, this is where I got my information, but um, I mean, it's probably obvious enough from the fact that I'm a Linux user that I'm in one of two camps on this. But I got all of my uh, all of my good information from the uh, Mechanical Keyboard General on the technology board of 4chan. <laughs> That's a good place to get some anonymous and, and mostly very sardonic and and, and uh, silly and kind of mean uh, information about keyboards. But that's where I got my information from. And that and searches and it took like 
two months to get because of uh, because of uh, supply chain issues. So that's that's something to keep in mind if you're looking to buy one. Um, by the way, are the uh, keys annoyingly loud? I was worried when I bought it that I wouldn't be able to record videos anymore. But then I also thought, I don't care, I have to use my keyboard every day. I want something nice. I haven't noticed it. I don't think it's as loud as my other keyboard. So, I fully expected it to be annoyingly obnoxiously loud. But, I figure all of the pro gamer types stream with these things. So people must be willing to tolerate them. Okay, I've got one more I've got one more bullet in the chamber here. Let's try remeshing. Oh gosh, oh my. Too much. Uh Oh, sweet. Good. That's good to hear. Thank you. Um, what time is it? 11 o'clock. I was hoping to be done with this in less than an hour, and I think if Loop Tools ever finishes, <laughs> I think I'll be done with it. Um, yesterday and the day before, I was up until like 12.30, and it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So I, I kind of resolved from the beginning to to take it easy tonight. And uh Man, that's still pretty terrible. Hmm. I don't know, it's got kind of a nice charm to it. What I really need to do is, uh, need to convert this back to a curve. <laughs> back to a curve. Are you a curve now? Yes. And now, I believe I have a simplified curve add on installed. It's a bit too much, isn't it? Oh, I'm making it worse. <laughs> there we go. How's this? Very nice. Now, convert it back to a mesh. Screw modifier. Where are you? There you are. And now we're gonna do... There we go. Well, it counts as a sculpt. I use the grease pencil sculpt tools and I use the mesh sculpt tools. I guess I should give it some materials.
There we go. Concentrate in there. Um, yeah, I really think it looks a lot like a hookah pipe. Um, look at my reference. Oh gosh, what's going on? My mouth, my mouse is stuck. I guess this thing at the top is like a giant cork. So, go ahead and make like a, looks like the normals are inverted. Gotta fix that. Shift in to switch the normals. And uh, is that just me or is that kind of stupidly big? I think it has been the whole time. Uh, so. I don't mind that being kind of thick. Uh, good enough, good enough, good enough. Let's give it some materials. Oh, oh. I'm going to make this bottom part glass. Make this part metal. Actually, maybe if I shouldn't do glass, that'll be a lot of work for me. I'm trying to take it easy tonight. Uh, angelic. No roughness. That's going to do everything. Um, going to do a couple of accents in that shiny metal. This we're going to do like a, I don't know, nice, uh, nice ceramic. Midnight blue. It's one of my favorite colors, midnight blue. I almost always add a clear coat, often with a similar roughness to the actual main specular. Clear coat on the principal shader, by the way, is always specular. It's never metallic. So even if you have a metallic material, it will be a specular reflection and uh, uh, oh, that looks nice cool. so I actually don't ever use it with metallic stuff but whenever I'm using a specular material I use the clear coat um, uh, give me the wireframe overlay please I use the clear coat because that way it's got like not such a perfect fall off on its specular reflections, you know? There's there's a bit there's a bit more to it than just the plain old single fall off. And and I think in real materials if you look at them closely, you can see kind of multiple layers of reflection going on. Um, 
Let's see if I disable the clear coat. Very, very subtle. But I think it does add something to it. Gives it a little bit more dimension, you know? Uh, this little knob, I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it like a brass material. This also will be brass. That looks fine. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I like to use the hide uh, function as like a temporary selection holder and uh, to make it so that the L key will select the right thing also uh, messed up a little bit there though find that we'll make this a bit rougher Gotta get this cork. Did I do it again? That's easy to get. Um, I try to always use the right tool for the job and everything I do. I think that saves me time. So I'm always switching the tools that I use. Um, and by, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get a nice keyboard is because uh, by having hotkeys for everything, they're always there at a moment's notice in a way that doesn't cause me to lose my momentum. And I feel like I only have that benefit when I use hotkeys to work. Grab all you guys. Shift, Control, Alt to select edge rings like this. Loop tools. Relax. Loop tools and simplify curves. I used that one earlier. They're built into Blender. Um, so you don't have to like pay for an add-on to use them. They're uh, they're already there. They're for everyone. Um, maybe someday one of my atoms will, will be built into Blender. That would be fun, wouldn't it? There we go. That's going to have to be our genie bottle. It was actually pretty fun tonight. Did not feel too stressed out about it. And I'm... I could have done that in 15 minutes if I'd been just using the modeling tools. And it would have been a little bit better. <laughs> but I think I did a good job interpreting today's theme in a creative way. So, uh... 
With that being said, good night, everybody. I think I'm going to skip tomorrow because it's kind of a dumb prompt. Uh, but I might do some programming stuff instead. I don't know. Haven't decided. I might spend the whole day holed up in my room working on my add-on. Because um, I promise y'all are going to like it. It's very cool. It involves nodes. Nobody's done anything like it yet. And, uh, I think it has the potential to, uh, I think it has the potential to, to get, to make people notice me a little bit. So, um, I might hold myself away in my room and work on that tomorrow. Anyhow, good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Note Spaghetti Live. Uh, and have a great night.